How would you like to 3X your digital marketing results? Hey, this is Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And in this episode, I'm speaking with Will Palmer from Tier 11, who has spent north of $10 million in Facebook ads and is now focused on transitioning people to YouTube ads. In this podcast episode, Will and I talk about how to migrate from Facebook advertising over to YouTube advertising and why, why it's critical and why it's important to be on YouTube as well, not just in terms of a diversification method, but also because of the changes that are happening within the Facebook algorithm, you know, uh, all the accounts getting shut down, iOS and all these other things. We talk about that in depth. We also talk about YouTube ad targeting, who we can actually target with our YouTube ads, why we should be targeting different people with our YouTube chat, YouTube ads, and how to make that targeting happen and produce results. We also talk about the ad creative in itself, why the creative and the creation of the ad is so important and how to make different ad creatives and test out those different creatives according to your business uh, and what you're trying to promote. We also talk about what your ad should include. So the little things that should be in your ad that can prompt people to take action, prompt you to get results with your ads and prompt you to build a connection and relationship with people uh, that are watching your ads. So different things that you need to have within your ad to get that result is what we talk about. We also talk about the different types of offers that your ad should be offering, the different types of things that you can promote for different um, for different audiences that are in different parts of their buying journey that can allow you to get great results. We also talk about different remarketing options within YouTube, how you can have remarketing lists and how you can build up those remarketing lists. Uh, we also talk about how YouTube provides better quality leads and can increase your customer lifetime value and so much more. I'm really excited about this podcast episode. You guys are absolutely gonna go away and love it. So listen in and enjoy. Today's episode is brought to us by Niche Website Builders, which is a company a few of my clients are using and have used for content creation and link building services. They do everything from start to finish. So from keyword research all the way to uploading your completed article for you. We've also had Bob members buy ready-made affiliate sites built by Niche Website Builders. So if you're looking to outrank your competitors' content and build better backlinks, Niche Website Builders and I have a special deal for you. Head to nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. But again, that's www.nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob. Bob. Do you want to start investing in websites, but don't want to drop $20,000 on your first investment? Check out Odie's where you can buy premium age domains to build a website on and add Odie's done for you affiliate site package to help you grow your website and get seen. Instead of buying a crummy website that's been built to sell with no authority, buy a premium age domain with built-in authority, great SEO and fresh quality content for your website. Head to odys.global to check out their great deals. That's O-D-Y-S dot G-L-O-B-A-L. Link will be in the description too. Will, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Happy to be here. Mate, How are things? It's, it's, been a, it's been a conversation I've wanted, wanted, wanted to have with you for so long. Uh, we chatted uh, probably, mm-hmm. what, three months ago now. Um, and we'll be chatting via email and I'm on YouTube and I'm excited by YouTube. Uh, a big reason is Facebook hate me <laughs> like so many businesses <laughs> these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, especially if you're in the make money online niche. Uh, and mm-hmm. even if you aren't doing anything particularly wrong, uh, a lot of people in other niches as well. So kind of wanted to just jump on and, you know, You've been working um, with Tier 11 and you've been working to get people f- migrated from from Facebook onto YouTube in a sense, right? You, you started with Facebook. Tell me about why why YouTube? Why is that a thing? So, yes, the reason why YouTube, my, so many clients have an interest in YouTube, I think, is because well, number one, it's owned by Google and Google basically <laughs> owned the whole internet. Um, and then number two, it's it's actually the second biggest search engine after 
after Google itself. So, you know, if often some somebody has a, a problem or they're looking to find out like how to do something, they, they'll go to YouTube just because, you know, people are a lot more, people like to see a video, they're more visual, um, too lazy to read maybe. <laughs> um, and it's it's good to get explanations. Obviously, you know yourself from 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 an actual person. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of search intent on YouTube. Um, and the other thing is it's, it's, it's video based. So a lot of those, if, if you've had success on Facebook, um, more than likely you've had success with video advertising. So if you have some good videos, um, you know, they can easily be adapted over and that's where we can start the testing on YouTube. Yeah, cool. Uh, so Facebook has started to get quite tricky with all the changes that are happening and it's not just Facebook in itself with their algorithm, but it's like outside forces like iOS changes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, is that, has that been a big, uh, a big force that has pushed you towards YouTube ads as well? Or, and is there anything else that you, you know, what are, the, are clients just saying, Oh, we're not getting results on, on Facebook. Like we were like, what's some of the things that have sort of made them want to, move from Facebook and test out or experiment with, with YouTube. Yeah, definitely like what's happened over the last year, you know, 2020 has been a very tough year for, for small businesses advertising on Facebook. Um, and I think the, yeah, what happened with, with the iOS 14 update, um, that's been a big push to kind of force people to, to diversify their channels. Um, I think people probably got, a little bit too comfortable with Facebook, maybe a little bit lazy. You know, they were getting really good results on Facebook, so they were they were happy just plowing away on Facebook. But um, you know, it's never a healthy place to be in when you're when you're over reliant on one channel. Because, like you said yourself, you know, Facebook don't don't like you, and um, like the same, like they they don't like many businesses. And you know, you can just open up your account one day and you've been completely banned for for no apparent reason or for some. Sometimes it can be for like a, it could be a sexual thing and your business is selling pet products. You know, you can just get flagged yeah, for completely right. random policy violations and then their, their support is obviously really bad. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's a healthy thing for a business to be diversified across different platforms and be, and drive traffic to, the, to their website from, from a number of different sources. And I think Facebook, Google, YouTube, YouTube and Google are kind of the same thing anyway, but we really do look at search and YouTube as like two separate channels. So they're the big ones, Google search, um, YouTube, Facebook, maybe some Google display as well. Um, and then more often now people are, are starting to like adapt. Uh, TikTok is huge at the minute, um, Snapchat. Um, and then depending on the business, you know, you could do a little bit of Pinterest, Bing, um, smaller channels like that. But yeah, I think if you're big enough, it's, it's just a, it's a healthy thing to be, to be diversified across all of your channels. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing uh, a lot more people on YouTube uh you know when, even just not just with my business seeing more more and more people you know watching youtube videos uh but even when i speak to people you know that when they consume content spending less time on facebook and more time on youtube uh when i'm out in the surf speaking to somebody they're like yeah i'm always watching this youtube channel or you know watching this and it's just you can see people prefer to consume their content via video and audio and that's me as well personally i I prefer that mm -hmm. than, than reading um, or scrolling on Facebook. <laughs> so how yeah, does one as a business owner, it, it's Facebook is just a, mm -hmm. a pit, <laughs> just a mm -hmm. pit of a time pit really. So yeah, how does one start to go, all right, what do I, you know, what do I need to get in order to start migrating and start, you know, doing some YouTube stuff? Are you, do you help people with organic YouTube or is it just, you know, if you're running these ads on Facebook, let's get those similar type of ads on YouTube. What's, you know, how do you help people make this migration or add it as yes. another channel diversification? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of different ways like we can go about it. Um, I am starting 
more recently I'm starting to look into more of the organic side and I, and I am starting to do some consulting and helping clients um, with their organic with their organic uh, channel as well and, and how to grow that and there's also ways that we can kind of use ads to help grow that organic side as well so it's not fully organic but it's just almost gives it a little boost with something called discovery ads um, mm. But yeah, like how do we get a client who's been like primarily Facebook to um, make the switch to YouTube? Like the first big thing that we look at is f Facebook is primarily interruption marketing. So, you know, people are, like you said, it's a time waste. You just go on there to waste time. You're scrolling through and then you will get interrupted by an ad. And if the ad is good enough, you'll click through to the landing page and, and so on. The way we look at YouTube is it's much more intent-based marketing. So people are going there to search for something. Well, a lot of people go there as well just for entertainment. So they might go on, they got a couple of, they got an hour to kill or they're, they're on there looking at music videos. But the other 50% of people who visit YouTube are, are there with a much stronger intent. And that's that 50, roughly about 50% of people they say go there with intent. And they're the types of people that we really want to get in. And, in front of especially in those early days because for example let's say somebody is searching for uh, how how to buy how to buy a website or how to do due, my due diligence on buying my first website and if you have an ad that speaks specifically to that keyword or to that phrase that somebody is is searching and and you can match your targeting exactly to that keyword or to the placements that show up for that keyword and if your ad calls that out you have like super high relevancy and because they're already looking for that type of information if if your ad is relevant you know they're going to be there they're going to consume that ad because they're looking to take in as much information as they can about buying a website or or whatever it, whatever it is they're searching so yeah, the first thing is 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 looking for those types of assets and and making sure that somebody has videos that videos that that speak to people. They're more they're more so almost like educational educational ads. They're they're, they're not kind of um, educative. What we what we call it's like an ad, and it's also educating. So it's not just like. Facebook where sometimes maybe you just have a GIF or you're just putting the offer or the price in, some, in front of people's faces um, 30 seconds long. YouTube, you look at it much more like a video, uh, television advertisement almost. It's closer to a television advertisement than it is a, like a short video ad from Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, definitely. So there's a few different things that mm -hmm. we need to um, break down there that you've mentioned. One of which is those... Um, you know the intent is 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 big and important i think mm -hmm. that the difference between facebook scrolling and like when you put an ad on facebook hopefully somebody sees it at the right time for them in their in their buying mm -hmm. journey right compared to somebody going to youtube to solve a problem of like i just need to fix this thing with my car mm -hmm. or something like that or I need to do a home improvement thing. How do I, you know, how do I tile my bathroom? Um, and, exactly. you know, they're trying to tile their bathroom. Uh, and you know that, you know, if you're selling tiles on Facebook, not everybody's going to want to buy tiles and scrolling to look at buying tiles. But somebody that's looking to, uh, you know, retile their bathroom, they're going to want, you know, they're probably most likely in the market for tiles as well because they're learning how they can do it themselves, right? So it's the, I can definitely see how the CPA can become really good for YouTube when the intent is there. Talking about like the difference in video on Facebook to YouTube, this is very interesting. Typically, what's the difference between, a, you know, like you said, it's it's more of a TV based commercial. But what are some of the things that you may need to have in the creative of a YouTube ad? And I guess we're probably talking about in stream ads uh, here. What are some of the what are some of the things that need to be in the creative of that video compared to a, a Facebook video? Yeah. So from my experience the the types of ads that work best are ads where you actually have the the face of the business or the spokesperson of the business or even if it's even if you can't get that but just having actually somebody on camera 
um, are usually the, the types of ads that work best. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's a number of different ads th that we can create then. Or that we have like basically a library of different ad formats that we would recommend for a client, depending on the type of business that they, that they have, depending on the types of uh, targeting that we're doing, if it's going to be a cold audience or a retargeting audience. Um, but typically for a cold audience, which is where 80, 80%, 90% of the spend usually goes, <clears throat> um, I like to follow like a, a format called the Educate format. So basically it's just, it's an easy way to get going and to get all of your assets in place and, and just to get that first ad live if they don't already have an asset that, that we can use from Facebook or from, from some other channel. Um, but yeah, the Educate uh, formula, it starts with the aim. So like, what is the aim of the ad or what has the person come to YouTube for? So that's typically what we will call out um, in the at the first five seconds of the ad. And then it goes into the difficulty. So like, what, what is the consumer's difficulty? Understanding, uh, let them know that you understand their problem. And then you can go into some credibility. Uh, so back it up with some customer testimonials or um, if you have any other types of credibility, like maybe you are featured in a magazine or some type of TV show. Um, and then an action plan, which it just easily goes into, okay, this is what you need to do. Step one, two, three, it just makes it really attainable for the prospect. Um, and then teach them. So you just give away a little bit of, a bit of a little small bit of content for free, make sure it's um, educational and then end with an exit. So you kind of give them a little tease before the, uh, the call to action at the end. Okay, so yeah, cool. that's so kind of typically the, one action. of the first ones. Yeah, exactly. That's just one of the kind of formulas that we use, but I, I often find that's a good one to start with because it, it has so many separate parts. And then like sometimes, for example, often you'll find, okay, there's a really good, the credibility section was really good. So let's lead with the credibility section rather than leading with the aim or the difficulty. So you can kind of chop and change those elements really easy. And, and it's, uh, it's simple to, to yeah, chop and change and just test different variations. And so when you say the credibility part was really good, how do you know mm -hmm. that that part of the video was really good? Like, how do you know to go, oh, the audience liked that? Is there some metric that you can look at or is there some way, or is it just you going, well, after producing the video, that part was pretty strong. What do you, how do you determine what part of, part of the video is good or not? Yeah, no, for, for that example, it's usually if you, like I have one client in mind who had some really strong testimonials and it was basically their customers sitting down the the video looked really good the quality and they were basically just talking about how this product changed their life and you can just tell by watching it that like it you know it actually emotionally moves you and you know it's just like we we need we can't bury this lead like this is the best part of the ad we have, you know we need to move that to the start and lead with that and let that be the hook um and it was like yeah how this product changed this person's life and then from there we kind of led into like building tension around the kind of the individual and yeah how this can ch also change your life so yeah Th that was a little bit more um it, it wasn't based on data really but it's, it was just a really good testimonial yeah i i i can see that mm -hmm. you'd want to have a digital marketing head to be able to go all right this has hooked me in emotionally where do we put these in different parts mm -hmm. of the video, which may be harder for some people listening. Um, but I guess they mm -hmm. can go away and ask people, what do you, what part of the video do you like? What part of the video grabbed you most? Um, and then rearrange it that way. I want to come back to yeah. <clears throat> another piece of the puzzle that we haven't yet talked mm -hmm. about. We, I, and this could be my fault. We kind of just went straight into the creative here, which is critical, mm -hmm. like you've said, for YouTube uh very different yeah. than facebook but how do we get people from searching to or being on youtube to watching that video how do we how do we is there some way that we can target them is that you know what are the different targeting options in terms of when we do this on facebook we can target different audiences how do we do that on youtube and mm -hmm. what's what are some of the the good tips that you have for us on that 
Yeah, cool. We'll talk a bit about targeting, but I think it even is good that you, you started with the creative because that's the most important thing about about YouTube okay. advertising. You know, on some of the other channels like Facebook, you can maybe rely a little bit more on the copy um, because you have lots of space for copy, but on YouTube, it's solely the video. That's all you have. You have like a tiny, I think it's 10 or 12 characters or something for a headline, but yeah, the creative, if you don't have good creative, you're not going to succeed on YouTube. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, the targeting is yeah also important, of course. Um, so there's a couple of places where where I like to start, um, and usually I will start as specific as I can, and I will I will go after those really low or really good CPAs, prove out the fact that YouTube is going to work for this business, and then from there we we can scale out. So the most specific or most laser type of targeting that we can do is called video placements so let's take your example from earlier let's say somebody is trying to find out how to tile their bathroom so how do i tile my bathroom you're selling uh, tiling tools or tiles um, how to tile my bathroom is the keyword and then you can take the 50 there's a tool that i use actually it's called adzula a d z OLA, I think it is, or ADZOOLA, but it's a yeah, it's an awesome tool. Um, I'd recommend it for anybody who's who's uh, starting YouTube advertising. And basically, it can do a number of things. But one of the things it does is you can put in that keyword for how to tile my bathroom. That will give you the it will replicate the results that YouTube will have. So you can take either fifty up to five hundred results for that keyword, and then you can plug those into a placement campaign on youtube and then your ad will only show on those specific placements so that's the most target the most laser type of targeting that you can do you can then go into your placements analyze that campaign okay this placement is not performing that well let's pause that placement and the budget gets redistributed to the, to the other placement so you just have it's it's very targeted but you also have a lot of control over the budget and it's easy to pause placements from there then you have keyword targeting do you want me to go into keyword targeting or? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, don't. just for people listening, that maybe they didn't yeah. um, didn't get it. It's so you, basically other mm -hmm. competitors that have videos uh, about what you're talking about in your ad is you can put your ad on their videos, basically. Uh, and I think people that are watching stuff on YouTube have seen this already. Is like if they're into entrepreneurship or if they're in the make money space mm -hmm. and they're watching a video on make money, uh, a video like that, mm -hmm. like a business opportunity or how to start your business will come up on that type of video, right? Uh, same with like if you're yep. going to tile a bathroom uh, and you're watching mm -hmm. somebody else's video on how to tile a bathroom, you're basically targeting your competitor's audience, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you can do it for competitors, or, or yeah, you can, or, or you can, you can just do it for general general keywords, um, which obviously often will have competitors' videos in there. Um, True. But yeah, it's just a really way. It's a really good way to get like super specific, and then of course you can do channel placement. So if you're in the how to make money online niche, you know there's certain channels like Grant Cardone or you know whoever else. Russell Brunson, different people like that. So you can show ads only on their channels and you could have like a campaign with 20, 50 different channels and then you can start optimizing based on which channels are performing the best. Um, sometimes people can actually have an option to have, they, they don't monetize their YouTube channel. So uh, certain businesses will, will have that option turned off. So you might think you have a really good um, channel to target and they have millions of subscribers but they might not be monetizing that channel and you won't be able to show ads there so that's the only the only instance where you won't be able to do that um and then yeah from from placement targeting you can then do keyword targeting so it's just a little bit more broader basically if somebody types in uh how to make money online you will show on any video that they're watching on YouTube within that session. So a session being 40 minutes. So it's a little bit wider. They could be watching, you know, something completely unrelated to what your product or business or service is. 
Um, and then from there, you kind of you go into uh, topic targeting, which is really good. We're having a lot of success with that, actually, with a number of different clients at the minute. Um, and it's huge, just huge scale there as well. And then there's audience targeting. You can create your own custom audiences, uh, lookalike, or they're called similar audiences, but they're the same as lookalike audiences on Facebook, remarketing. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different targeting options you can do. I just want to pause this episode for an immediate update. Online business owners and website investors, please note that SEO and digital marketing is changing forever. 2022 will not be the same as 2021, so you can't miss the Buying and Building Online Businesses Summit. This is a free virtual event, and we're going live on January 28th, 2022, with 12 world-class speakers from CEO Flipper Blake Hutchinson. Motion Invest co-founder John Gilham, e-commerce mastermind Mike Jackness, SEO expert Stefan Spencer, godfather of content marketing Joe Paluzzi, and many, many more. Don't get left behind when buying or growing your online business in 2022. We're going live on January 28th. So register at buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash online summit. That's buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash online summit. Link will be in the description too. See you there. So, in terms of retargeting, you can you can uh, you can put a pixel or a, I wouldn't say pixel a Google tag on your site <laughs> or on your different pages and then retarget them on YouTube with different ads. Is that right? Yeah. If you yeah if you had enough traffic, you could retarget people based on URLs. So. If somebody is visiting a very specific page on your website, you could follow up with a video that, you know, that makes sense, that leads on from that page. Um, if you don't have that much website traffic, it would, it would be best just to do all website visitors and you follow up with a remarketing video, you know, maybe uh, some objection busters or maybe some testimonials, something basically that makes sense to somebody who has already seen your website or seen your offer. <laughs> Um, so that's a good, good type of targeting. Another, another low hanging fruit would be, um, people who've interacted with your YouTube channel. So if you already have a presence on YouTube, you can basically target your subscribers. You can target anybody who has viewed any of your videos, anybody who's liked any of your videos. And then once you start doing some YouTube advertising, you can also retarget anybody who has viewed a video from an ad. It's another, another good one to do. Cool, cool. So you basically somebody's, if, I guess, somebody who's cold from a, a keyword that's viewed an ad, and they watch the whole thing. I guess you can put another ad in front of them, kind of like what you could do on Facebook as well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. So, mm -hmm. what are you know when somebody's like, all right, I'm running my business on Facebook with Facebook ads, and they mm -hmm. may be you know selling a product directly on facebook uh through their ad or they're running a a campaign to get leads and giving like a discount code off a off a product or a free resource or uh, some sort of opt-in where would you typically start with your ads like what are you where would you typically start to promote what would you typically start to promote in terms of offers because is it is it working just to straight up, you know, here buy my product or is it, do you have to lead in with something a lot softer? Yeah, no, not, not typically. Like we will just take what the, whatever offer they're running or whatever their best performing offer on Facebook is. We will take that and then we will start on YouTube. Um, and we will usually start with that more um, focused type of targeting, like placements, keywords, get, make prove out the the concept there and then from there we can start going out to some of the broader forms of targeting like topics audience targeting and then we'll also have that basis from facebook so we know that this offer has such and such a conversion rate on facebook and you know these are the metrics that we're getting from facebook so at least we can compare it from that and we have a benchmark to work from um one of the other things then that we we started to notice with a lot of clients who, who kind of have some more uh, advanced tracking capabilities, like people who are using Wicked Reporting or Hyros or anything like that, so they can really see the, the lifetime value of their customers. Um, typically, 
YouTube and, and Google actually as well has a much higher um, lifetime value coming from YouTube and Google than Facebook. Um, and that's really down to the, to the purchase intent as well. You know, people are, are searching for specific products or searching for solutions to specific problems. So you're getting a higher quality lead from Google and YouTube compared to Facebook where, you know, oftentimes it's more of a, an impulse purchase or you have to be persuaded a lot more to, to become a buyer. Wow. So better, you can get better mm. customer lifetime value from YouTube because of their intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one client in specific, he saw after one month, the, the, the value of leads that were coming from uh, YouTube were like three X that he was getting from Facebook. So that meant we three, could obviously three shoot for a much 3, higher. X. Three X, three times. Three X. Three okay, times well. is valuable. So let's say that coming from Facebook, they were valued at like $100 and YouTube, they were $300 after one month. So that basically meant we could increase our, our cost per acquisition on YouTube and, and it allowed for a much greater scale. Um, but yeah, these are, these are the types of things you have to be keeping your eye on because often it does cost, it, it, it can be more expensive to acquire a customer on Facebook or I'm sorry, on Google or YouTube. But you know, if they're, if they're three times more valuable, it, it all works out in the end. Yeah. That's a really good mindset to have, right? Like it may cost you more to acquire a lead, but more of those leads will could convert from YouTube rather than what they are on Facebook. Cause let's get, let me give you an example then. So people understand this. Say you get a hundred mm -hmm. leads from Facebook that are $10 each, right? So that's a thousand dollars. And then you get, uh, 50 leads from YouTube that cost you, um, a thousand dollars all up as well. Right. So mm -hmm. from those 50 leads on YouTube compared to a hundred leads on Facebook, those hundred leads on Facebook, you may have 10 people convert. Right, so you got a ten percent conversion mm -hmm. rate in terms of uh, sales, and then from those fifty mm -hmm. leads on YouTube, you may get twenty percent or twenty people buy, which means you're getting a far higher conversion rate, but paying more for the leads and getting a higher customer lifetime value. Does that math make sense? Yeah, it does. It it does, and it's. You know, it's it's a common thing that we that we do see as well. And if you think about it, you know, it makes sense if, if somebody is going if somebody is already coming into your funnel with a higher purchase intent. So if somebody is on YouTube and they're searching, how do I buy a business or what are the what are the red flags I need to look at when I'm buying an online business? They're already almost sold, you know, rather than Facebook. People might see it and like, OK, yeah, this is a really cool opportunity maybe i can make a quick buck they, they don't they don't really know what they're getting in for but they you know they they still click on it just because the volume there's so much volume there on facebook but yeah often yeah. we see uh we'll see a much higher quality lead and people convert at a higher rate and then they'll also buy more if that's the type of business that you have when they when they come from youtube well amazing that's really cool i think that mindset for people yeah who are running ads on Facebook or running ads anywhere is critical to understand because more, more is not always the best, right? It's like comes back to the quality mm. over the quantity yep. type situation that plays out in so many different aspects that I just, people listening are probably sick of me talking about quality over quantity. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk about the leads uh, because is there a certain opt-in that works quite well that you've seen for people on YouTube compared to Facebook? Um, you know, where would somebody start? Like if they were going to create an ad and just go, I'm going to, I'm going to create an ad and I'm going to create one that targets keywords and one that targets, you know, uh, different videos, what type of ad would they create? Um, and what should they be offering in that ad? like as in terms of mm -hmm. 
you know, the call to action? What should that be for somebody who's starting out, do you think, for their business? Yeah, for somebody starting out, I probably wouldn't go too granular and I wouldn't try to like match your ad too much to specific keywords or placements at the start. I would just try and get like your best content out there. And then from that, then after your initial testing, you can kind of drill down a little bit deeper and see, okay, look, these keywords are performing really well. Let's make a video specifically for this keyword or okay, these placements, these five, 10 placements we've been getting all of our conversions from, what is it about these placements? And go in there and look at the videos that people are are converting on and we'll like try and match up that data and kind of drill down and see what it is about those and, and then possibly use that to, to make a video. But at the start, I would just take, yeah, your best content and get that out there and kind of go a little bit broader with your video, even if your targeting is if you're still going for that super specific targeting, but it's it's also broad, so you're doing it across different keywords, and they're you know they're they're going to be keywords related to whatever your business is. But I would I would go a little bit broader on the video and just try to make the best content you can. That's why I often lead with that um, educate formula. I just find it's a good one to start with. If somebody doesn't have any assets that we can use from Facebook. Um, and yeah, or if you have another one, like, you know, don't just talk about your business, talk about a, a problem, lead with a problem, agitate that problem, and then talk about the solution and how your business can be the solution. But never be too salesy on YouTube either. That's a big thing. So don't make it too much like an ad. You have, you have to kind of, you know, like stick with the style of the the platform so they say as well when you're making tiktoks don't make ads make tiktoks when you're making youtube video video ads you know make it like a youtube video so don't just go straight in there and make it too salesy um, i like it that's a really good point because yeah. the make money online niche it's so salesy <laughs> mm. yeah <laughs> Uh, so what yeah. what do you think people should be promote, promoting then in their first ad like towards the end of the ad the call to action should it be a downloadable ebook should it be um, access to something um, should it be a discount code what mm -hmm. are some of the things that you have seen that have worked with your clients that that, that yeah 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 you like the ad will do we'll get them to the landing page. So at the end of the ad, I like to always put like a countdown timer. So it just gives people an extra five, five seconds or so to actually click and like have an arrow pointing down, making it really obvious, like click the link below to learn more. Um, so yeah, it just gives them a little bit of time because often your ad then can transition straight into whatever that video is that they actually came to YouTube for. So um, yeah, give them that little bit of time and then the landing page will do the next step and yeah typically what i've i've seen a lot of different offers work well on youtube it could be e-commerce we've seen lead magnets work or like 27 dollar trip wires you know typically those types of types of offers have been performing best um and yeah interestingly enough actually often what works as well is when you have a video on the landing page so you know have a small just a short video sales letter kind of explaining what your product or what your service is about um for some reason that combination video to video just seems to work well you know it obviously has kind of congruence people are already after buying into the video and then yeah you can ask them after that ask them for their lead or, or tripwire offer whatever whatever it may be cool okay so lead for a free thing or tripwire for mini mini product i like that that's really cool yeah well this has been yeah. and if so you can test both yeah happy test happy both. Uh, okay. you, so you found let's that let's talk about testing yeah mm -hmm. so let's t let's talk about testing briefly before we finish up you mean test yeah. test one landing page versus another landing page or just test test the different offers would you suggest what should you start testing would you start testing audiences first would you start testing creative first or would you start testing offers first um yeah you kind of you kind of have to test a couple of different things at the same time because you know you're going to have 
hopefully more than one ad. So you're going to be testing like a minimum two ads at the same time. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, you know, not everybody is going to have a lot of budget. So yeah, I would recommend testing two to four ads with one landing page, preferably the, the lead landing page, lead magnet first, just because it's going to be easier to get leads, see which, which ad performs best, see how cheap you can get your, your cost per lead. And then maybe from there, then you could test your lead magnet funnel and then see how how those names back out compared to the to the names that came from your lead magnet. But yeah, there's there's countless different um, combinations that you can test. Um, ideal in an ideal world, you know, you'd like to be testing the lead magnet and the um, the tripwire at the same time, and you could really analyze then at the end of the month which one you know brought in more profit. Um, and yeah, I would always have at least two ads live in every in every uh, campaign, and I often have a separate campaign set up, even specifically just for testing new ads. So when those best performing ads start to fatigue, you'll have something else to to go in the in in their place. Yeah, and I guess it's a lot easier to measure one ad that's live against another ad that's live rather than having to go backwards and forwards to see oh what was that other ad that we had on again to test it against it yeah uh, thanks so much this has yeah. been awesome yeah. absolutely awesome to, cool. to chat i just want to i just want to ask is there anywhere that we can get mm -hmm. send people to get in contact with you if they want to get in contact with you um uh, yeah. also i'm just going to pause the video there mm -hmm. sorry because mm -hmm. i realize that you may not have a website or anything like that so whoever's editing this please just like realize we'll pause this here I didn't want to put you on the spot. This, right? so, <laughs> no, I was just going to tell them to go to my LinkedIn. Okay, cool. All right. I'll ask you that again and then we'll, we'll come back into the yeah. video. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Will, thank you so much for coming on. Where can we send people if they want to like rack your brain or, or work with you or yeah, learn more from you? Yeah, I'd love to hear from from some of your audience and probably the best place they can find me now is LinkedIn. So if they just search Will Palmer, P-A-L-M-E-R on LinkedIn, um, I'd be I'd be happy to chat. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I'll put your um, link to LinkedIn in the show notes, guys. Check that out there. Those of you Great. who are listening, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you know somebody who has a business that's running ads on Facebook or isn't running ads at all, and they may be considering YouTube, please make sure you share this podcast episode with them so they can learn this process from start to finish on how, where they should, what they should be doing to create an ad that actually converts. Thanks for listening, guys. See ya. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video was good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out, it's an awesome playlist, you'll enjoy it.